Good morning. While working on my voxeling project, I came across something that seemed worth mentioning. In the previous voxeling video, I talked about the effort to port the JavaScript files to ES modules syntax. I'm 99% done with that effort, and I have a working build again. While working on that, I had to rewrite bits of the cursor logic, which includes a call to a ray tracer, and that's where I encountered something that I thought might be interesting to show. But I should do a quick aside about ray tracing and what it is. Uh, the easiest way to understand what ray tracing does is to think about a projectile like a bullet. It leaves a position and keeps traveling along a straight line until it hits something. Ray tracing logic begins at a starting point, moves a small amount in a specific direction, and then tests whether there were collisions along the way. If so, it often returns with details about exactly where the collision took place. If not, it moves a small amount again in the same direction, tests for collisions, and repeats. Often there's an upper bound on how far you ray trace out, which is why well, I do have some logic errors in this right here. But um, as you can see, the, the detection stops about 10 blocks away, which is what I've configured in the code. I was again working on camera views, and I think I messed up some of the math again, which is why it's off here, but that's okay. All right, so this game uses ray tracing to find blocks directly in front of the player so that the player that so that the player can create or destroy blocks at that location. You may have heard my power just flicker. I hope that didn't affect the recording. Um, sorry for that aside, but yeah, so while combing through my code for the porting efforts. Um, I also took time to clean up things that just looked off. Uh, I made um, I made changes to bring about more consistency, and that's and uh, let me show the line that jumped out at me that I decided to make a little more consistent. So this here, voxel hit, that is what stores the hit location from the ray tracer. And you know, I'm going through this file, I'm seeing, okay, we create a VEC3 here. That should be fine for voxel hit, right? Well, yeah. Okay, so this is what it looks like, what it should look like. When your cursor, the little green dot, is on a cube face, it selects the cube. And there's, again, there's little math errors in my camera logic right now. So that's why it's off by a couple of pixels, but that's what it's supposed to do. And, um, well, never mind that, I hit the wrong key. When you want to create a block, you hit Control, and it'll select the adjacent, you know, where the block would be that's adjacent to the current one. That one, or here, I'd select that one. Okay, so that's what it's supposed to do. So the default action, like I said, is to you know select the block that's directly in front of the player, right under the, the cursor. And I changed this, thinking, oh, well, let's make it consistent. I made it a vec3.create. <clears throat> let's recompile. And we'll show you what it resulted in. Come on. There you go. So on this side, it, it selects the block adjacent to the face. Come over here, and some of these select the actual correct cube itself, which is just odd, right? So it kind of seems to randomly select things. Um, it took me a while to rele realize that this was due to floating point precision. Woo! The, um, the VEC3 actually makes a float32 array of three elements, and that's where the hit positions are put into. 
So if we make a float32 array, build again, we'll see that the behavior is the same. I need to make sure that I get the right refreshed bundle. Oh, did I mess something up? What's going on? Did I? Oh, <laughs> I typed it wrong. There we go. Yep. Thanks for catching that, guys and gals. All right. Okay, so float32 array is the same behavior. The original code, if you remember, made a generic array of three, right? This could hold any type. So whatever comes out of our ray tracing calculations will likely be, you know, higher precision than a float32 and can easily just be plopped into this array. So let's think through why this might matter. Um, the ray tracing logic, again, starts at a position um, and then moves a certain direction and then tests for collisions. So if the direction that the ray tracer moves by default is very small, it may end up being too small to be represented in a float32, in, in, in a 32-bit floating point representation. And I think that's, that's exactly what's happening, which kind of results in some, some rounding or, you know, rounding up or down of the resulting positions from the ray tracer. Hopefully I explained that well, but it kind of makes sense. Um, so if I change this to a what 64 array, what will happen? I think float 64 should be more than sufficient. I don't remember what the highest precision floating point representation JavaScript has, but yeah, that looks exactly what we would expect. So yeah, it was a floating point precision issue before. It was a real virtual world instance where you must choose the correct floating point precision type to accurately represent the results of the calculations that you're performing. Um, fun stuff. Needless to say, it took me quite a long time to realize this. I kept wondering whether previous versions of the code did some different rounding or other logic, I, I thought that maybe I was somehow using the wrong variable and it was resulting in some inconsistencies based on where the player was pointing. I, it, I, you know, I went down all the rabbit holes, but floating point. So yeah, precision matters. And I think that's pretty much it. I hope that was a little bit interesting and uh, take care.